In this problem video, I want you to do the atomic orbital filling for selenium. And you'll notice that we've arranged our atomic orbitals in the same filling order that you use using the di diagonal chart. So we've got it over there as a reference. Now, while you're doing this, make sure that you're paying careful attention to your spins. Make sure you're following Hund's rule and the Pauli exclusion principle. Make sure that you're doing all the things you need to do to fill this. Go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try. Okay, so let's take a look. Now, for atomic number 34, I have 34 electrons because I had 34 protons and I have no charge specified on selenium. Remember, that's the way you want to think through it. Selenium, 34 protons. No charge, 34 electrons. Now I'm ready to go. Don't just think about the atomic number and not pay attention to the translation between protons and electrons. So I've got 34 to do. I can go one, two, three, Four. Notice that I'm spin pairing them. In other words, one up and one down. Now I've got to follow Hun's rule and fill across five, six, seven before I then pair up. Eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Nineteen, twenty. Now we're up to the d orbital. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I've got four more to go. 31, 32, 33, and 34. Just as not a formal convention, but just as a way that we do things to do it quickly, we tend to just put this one into the leftmost box. You know, we write from left to right. This could equally correctly be in any other spot as long as you only have one paired uh, set somewhere in that set of orbitals. Now I'll just leave it here as a matter of rote. So that's how we'd fill up our atomic orbital. Also notice that if you aren't doing this correctly and you were to pair over here and leave this one empty, this would be a good way for me to make sure that you're filling in the correct fashion where you fill all the way across first, then pairing. If you're pairing first and leaving one open, that's incorrect. And notice how easy that would be for me to check on something like a multiple choice question. How many unpaired electrons do you have? In this case, you'd say zero, which would be an incorrect answer. You should have two. So that's how we're going to do our filling for selenium. So now that you've filled up selenium, what I'd like you also to do is write your condensed electron configuration for this atom. Go ahead and pause the video and do that now. Okay, so our condensed electron configuration is just going to be a very compressed version of what we see there. We're going to have our 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, and 4p4. Notice that for each of these, what we're doing is we're just describing what we have over here. And this is a very fast way of doing the same thing without having to draw so many up and down arrows. Um, so we'll have our 1s, and you see that it is filled with 2. Just as a random sampling, we can see here that we have 10 electrons in our 3d, 3d, 10. And in our 4p, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. Now if we were to compress that, notice that we've just filled up a 4s orbital. Then we've got our 3d, and then a 4p. We do our 3d, we come around the periodic table and do a 4s. You can see that that's going to be a breaking point. So if we were to look at our periodic table, we see argon was the noble gas configuration that was before we started our 4s. So this portion looks like argon. And so when we make our compressed notation, our condensed notation, we're going to say argon in brackets, followed by the things that were above it, 4s2, 3d10, and 4p4. I also remind you that sometimes we'll group that together. Sometimes you'll see people put the 3D10 at the beginning and have the 4S2, 4P4 written afterward. We still follow the same filling rules. We still have the same superscripts. But you are allowed to change the order of these depending on what thing you're emphasizing, whether you're emphasizing the highest orbital radius, that'll be our fours, or whether you're emphasizing the highest energies, that would be our 4P in this case. Remember. 3d10 is higher in energy than 4s2, but it is smaller in radius.